Sorry, sorry, I'm a little late, still getting some last minute announcements. So before I forget, Senior Saints, July 7th, uh, Thursday at 2 p.m., back in the Family Life Center, you're having banana splits. I think we'll probably have some people added to the Senior Saints group this week. Um, bring <laughs> toppings, please, for that. So July 7th. Um, the other thing I don't want to forget is next week, immediately after the service, there's a meeting for VBS volunteers for the Hay Day. So please, if you're volunteering for that, if you could stay after the service and you will be meeting Family Life Center or in the overflow. Okay, so um, please mark your calendars for that. Um, I need to open the loop. I'm so sorry. Oh, forget it. Um, we're glad to have you here. We've got a... Um, a bike ride coming up, motorcycle ride, on July 16th, Saturday. Um, so please uh, sign up for that. Please sign up to volunteer for that because we need a lot of volunteers. Um, there's going to be a dinner provided afterward for the motorcycle riders. And um, please encourage your motorcycle friends to sign up for that ride because it's going to be a lot of fun. This weekend is the um, yard sale for the youth, uh, Friday and Saturday from 9 to 2. Um, please bring your stuff by Wednesday, or you can um, schedule an appointment with Miss Sherry, but don't wait too long because, you know, she's going to have a lot of stuff to go through. So um, please, if you haven't already cleaned out your stuff, we need stuff, yeah? We need stuff to sell so we can make some money for the youth for NYC next year. Um, am I missing anything? Help me out. Anyone? Okay. We want to know you. So if you have not been here before, we welcome you. We're so glad to have you. We have a gift for you in the back by the Welcome Center. If you stop right after the service, somebody will give you that. Um, and we've got some cards in the front. We want to connect. So if you don't mind filling out that card, and you can put it in the um, offering plate. And um, what else? We want to pray for you as well. If you need prayer, um, please put that on the card as well. And you can put that in the offering plate and know that we will be praying for you for your specific um, prayer need. Uh, we love you and uh, look forward to this service today. All right, and we've got some campers and other adults that were here. So if you're a kid camper or if you're a teen camper, come on down. Okay, anybody else? Here comes Jesse. All right, so kids camp was last weekend. It was Thursday, no it wasn't, it was Friday through Monday. So we came home Monday and then the teens left on Monday and came home Friday. So it was back to back camps. And so we're just sharing a little bit about what you learned and your favorite thing about camp and then just pass it on. My favorite thing was seeing the kids really connect with Jesus and the Holy Spirit speaking to them and even during the worship time just like being touched during this worship time. Um, and then some of our kids even made decisions to continue to follow Christ and we had one kiddo that from our church that made a decision to follow Jesus for the first time. So that's great news. That was the whole idea of camp. So Pacey here, something you learned about camp, something you learned. The thing I loved about camp was how we had a whole bunch of activities that all the kids got along with each other for. And what I learned was that when... David killed Goliath, he chopped off his head. <laughs> you wanna say nothing? You wanna say nothing? All right, that's okay. Jesse, Uh Yeah, I'm, I'm with them. I had a really, really great time. Uh, one of my favorite parts of camp is always uh, seeing God work in the lives of young people. Right? A lot of times, young people tend to feel like, um, you know, they, they see all the adults, you know, and it kind of feels like um, God really moves through and works in the adults, but he also works through the kids. Yeah. All he needs is a willing vessel, right? I like to refer to teen camp and taking 200 people to a Reds game as herding cats. It was... <laughs> But everyone survived, and we all got back. Um, our, on our shirt says divergent, which means different, um, living differently, and that's pretty awesome. Something that I also loved is watching the kids go from Monday, they're all just in their like, small group that they came with, not really talking, playing sports and stuff, to Thursday night, 
Um, they're crying. They're exhausted. God is really working on them. They're giving their lives to Christ, and they're really working through their stuff. And then um, Friday morning, they're worshiping with their hands up. It's pretty amazing to watch God work. Um, I love the worship and building relationships with people and getting them to know better. I love I loved, I loved all the activities we got to do and all the free time. Like the um, I just liked all the games, and I loved the Reds game. It was pretty fun. I liked all the activities, and um, I learned that life isn't always happy, but we still have to keep hope. Now, with that being said, one announcement to make. It is summertime, right? We're in between school, right? Everybody just kind of left one grade. We're getting ready to go into another. And now that we are on the other side of camp, if you are going into the sixth grade, raise your hand. I think we have one or two more as well. Well, now that we are on the other side of camp, it is time for those fifth graders to move on up from kids into youth. And so if you want to, now is the time. We'll see you tonight at five o'clock. We are having breakfast food, right? Barb is making waffles and French toast and sausage and fruit salad and cereal and other stuff too. There's a lot. So uh, congratulations and uh, welcome those to youth group. Welcome. Also, um, while I have this, let's go ahead. Let's take a few moments to greet one another. Uh, if you see somebody new, tell them good morning. Glad to see them here. Make your way back to your seats if you'd remain standing. Um, we have a, uh, a special birthday today. 
Pastor Bree, uh, Bree, it's her birthday today. Oh. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Jesus said that if we believe in him, we have his Holy Spirit living inside of us. However, life weighs us down, and sometimes it's so easy to forget that we have full access to that power. The song we're going to, getting ready to sing is a song to adjust our posture as believers. It's a song of readiness, a reminder that we can call on the Holy Spirit as our counselor, our healer, our deliverer. Imagine what our lives, our families, and our churches would be like if we continually lived with that in the forefront of our minds and hearts. I pray this song is an anthem for our churches. Uh, that would flow to every inch of our lives more and more for the Holy Spirit. John 14, 15 through 17 says, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Oh, just reset. 
great song. <laughs> that's awesome. yeah, a great song. Man, that should be our prayer today, that the Holy Spirit will come and fall fresh on us here this morning. Wow. As we, um, as we continue on in our worship, we come to a time of, of taking up our, our tithes and our offerings. Man, I tell you, God has been faithful to us. God has been faithful to us. And so this morning as we come, let us worship him this morning with this act of our tithes and our offerings. So I'm going to go to God in prayer. Would you join me this morning? Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much. It's hard not to come before you without a thankful heart. You've just done so much for us in our lives. And so often I look and I just, I don't understand why you're so good to me. But you are. And you're faithful in it. And Lord, so often when people in our lives let us down, it's, it's so good to look to you as a firm place to stand. Lord, you never let us down. Never. So Lord, this morning we come and we worship your holy name. And Lord, as we praise you and we worship you this morning, Lord, we do so by bringing before you our tithes and our offerings. It's something you've asked of us. And so, Lord, we want to be faithful to you in that. And Lord, I pray that as people come and they're faithful to you in that, Lord, that you will bless them. You will bless them, both the person and the gift as well, Lord, and help us to use that to further your kingdom. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, those offering plates are here in the front. If you want to if you want to come forward for that, we'll place those in here. And also, um, kids, you are dismissed for Children's Church. Please come. us as we continue to worship our Lord through song.
No, um, we don't have to come to God like somebody else. We can come to him like we are. And a lot of the times that means that when I start my prayer time with God, I just ask him to show me my heart, show me where I am, show me the truth about myself so I know how to follow you.
why is consistent prayer one of the greatest needs in our local church today? Why should we consistently pray for other Christians in our local churches? Why do we pray for miracles? Why do we pray for healing? Why do we pray for freedom from addictions or repentance of sin? Paul tells us in Ephesians 1, 17, he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and here it is, so that you may know him better. So that you may know him better. That's how we pray for other Christians. That's how we pray for deliverance. So that we, when we hear their testimonies, we can praise God and know him better. And we also pray for other Christians so we can be encouraged and have hope for the future. Just remember when you were a little kid on, on Christmas Day and you were ready to open up those presents. Just think how eager you were to get to those presents. Well, Paul says, also, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Jesus is coming again, and he's coming for his reward. We talked briefly in Sunday school today that we are Jesus' reward. We are his inheritance. And so we pray for one another to encourage one another and to look forward to the future, to look forward to the return of Jesus Christ with great anticipation, great anticipation, just like as a little kid would when they wake up on Christmas morning. So we're gonna, we're gonna pray in just a moment and we're gonna pray specifically for a, a couple people. Remember them in your prayers. Remember David Collins in your prayers. That's Wayne's brother. He's still having heart problems and so Wayne is, is with him today. So lift up the Collins family in prayer. And then also after we're done praying, we're going to anoint Dan Snyder. He's been such a blessing to our church. We love him dearly and we're gonna pray, pray over him and anoint him. But also my challenge for the congregation this week is to think of someone in the church that you could pray for all week, every day, all week. Pray for them by name so that they may know the Lord Jesus Christ better. I invite you to come to the altar. If you have a prayer or a need, you can pray right where you are, but join me in prayer as we lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Lord Jesus, as we just come to you in prayer this morning, we are just in awe of your love for us. Lord, we are your inheritance. You love us so much that you, you gave of yourself, you gave your life for us so that we could live with you forever. And Lord, prayer was so important in your life you prayed to your Father, Lord Jesus, when in your time of trials, in your time of temptation. Lord, you prayed for your disciples. You prayed that the Holy Spirit would protect them from the evil one, that they wouldn't be taken out of the world, but they would fulfill the mission to which you had called them. And Lord, you prayed also for anyone who would believe on your name. So Lord, that is still true today. You are still praying for people today. You are our great high priest. You are our intercessor. Right now, you are praying for your people. You are praying for us right now, Lord. You are always praying. And the apostle Paul said to pray without ceasing. And so Lord, help us to have an attitude of prayer that is just constantly on our mind. We are in constant need of you. And Lord Jesus, as the disciples asked you to increase their faith, I'm asking that you would increase our prayer life see our need for prayer to be in constant communication with you and lord that'll help us that'll help us fight off the schemes of the devil and lord you not only help us in the here and now but lord you give us great hope for the future lord we have a bright future anyone who is in christ has a bright future this isn't all there is lord you have a glorious reward waiting on us in heaven and our greatest reward lord jesus is you seeing you face to face and hearing from your mouth, well done, good and faithful servant. So Lord, we lift up people who are in need today. We lift up those who are lost. Lord, we pray for repentance of sin today. Lord, we pray for freedom today. This is the year of victory. 
So, Lord, as we continue on, Lord, I just pray over every aspect of the service today. From our speakers today, Juan and Jesse, as they share their testimonies, and Pastor Denny, as he preaches the message today, we pray over Dan, Lord, that you would heal his body. We pray over David Collins, Lord, that you would heal his body today, so that we may be in awe of you and your miraculous working hand, and so that we can know you better. And, Lord, we just lift up everything today. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ, gather around our brother. Let's gather around our brother and let's believe in God to do always what he can do like no other. Thank you, Lord Jesus, today. Oh, your power and your grace and your mercy, they prevail today. They do. You are, Lord, what we have sang about and, and prayed about already. You are the healer. You're the one that provides freedom and victory. Thank you, God. There is nothing too big for you, nothing too serious for you. We trust you, God, that you will do exactly, Lord, what will, what will honor and glorify your name. And we pray, God, this prayer of anointing we do. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit for this, this dear brother of ours, this precious son of yours. Oh, Dan, we thank you, God, for him. Touch him, Jesus, head from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God. We praise you right now. And Lord, we would even pray, as, as Pastor Tony gave mention of, we pray for David Collins today, that right there where he is, the condition of his heart, God, we believe, God, that what you have knitted together at the very beginning, God, you are still able to take care of it now. Right now, God, if, if it's a complete healing of a heart, you can do it, God. We believe in your power to do it. But whatever, God, you choose to glorify yourself and get the attention of people to say God is real, that you will do it, Lord, right now. And we pray it all in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Everyone said amen. 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 Praise his holy name. <laughs> We might as well. <laughs> we have some special guests with us this morning. They have come from Indianapolis, Jesse and Janaid. They are going to be sharing their testimonies with us on how the Lord Jesus Christ delivered them from addiction. And this is, this is the year of victory. And I'm gonna, they're going to come up and, and share how the Lord has worked in their life. And there are pamphlets throughout the congregation of Jesse's testimony. And there is more pamphlets in the back there. And then if you feel so led after the service, if, if you would like to give a love offering to Jesse or Janaid, just drop something in the, the back there. It's, it's right next to where Al's standing, if you feel so led to do so. So at this time, we're going to have Janaid come up first, and he's going to share how the Lord Jesus Christ delivered him from addiction and gave him freedom. So let's, let's welcome Janaid. My name is Janaid, and for you guys who don't know, that's a Pakistani name. I was raised as a Sunni Muslim, and... Uh, a few different, a few things about being a Muslim, um, growing up that way, is uh, certain things that we believe, and we believe about Christians as well. So, as a Muslim, I was taught Christians are pagans because they worship three gods. Um, you know, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, growing up, I, I kind of had, a, I didn't hate people but I had a disdain for the Christian religion because I did believe that they worship three gods. And, um, and um, they say God has no son. And then also, you know, one of the biggest lies is that Jesus did not die on the cross. Um, and that the Bible has been corrupted so growing up as a child, I had to 
you know, read the Quran and learn to pray in Arabic. And I couldn't understand any of those words, but I was, for some reason I had to pray in Arabic. And, um, you know, and, and I would ask, so why, you know, as I started growing up, I started reasoning to myself, so why do I have to pray in Arabic if, God can't under, if I can't understand Arabic? Well, that's the language of God, they would say. Um, and you have to you have to realize that all of this you know theology and ideology of the Muslim world comes from a seventh century Saudi Arabian country, and it's really not changed. Um, and everything from you know the way we pray was ritualized. Now I never prayed five times a day. Most people don't pray five times a day until they get older and realize they're going to die, and they have to have some sort of penitence um, so you know learn to pray you know do all the just very ritualized prayers everybody stands you know shoulder to shoulder um, you could do that in the home or in the mosque but it was very ritualized it had to be said in Arabic and there were certain stances on every you know every formation, you know, that, that we were taught to do. Um, and the way to get to heaven is to do more good than bad. It's, it's a very works righteous, you know, religion. It's, it's very works based, like pretty much every other religion except for Christ. And um, it was very, very oppressive especially being having one world you know with all my aunts and uncles and my dad now my mom's from Connorsville, indiana i'll, I'll let you figure that out <laughs> so, you know so but i was raised not just by my mom but my dad but all his relatives that came over from pakistan um so like i said it was very oppressive and as a teenager i did start to rebel um, you know, I was, I was, by this point, I think I was an agnostic, um, and I rebelled, and I started doing drugs, and I started drinking, and, you know, by the time I was 17, 18, 19, 20, I had more shackles on me than I had before just being a Muslim, and it was, it was, you know, my life was full of darkness, darkness and hatred. And, um, you know, I was, I was in bondage to that. And, uh, you know, if you see me, I'm, I'm 44. You know, I stopped drinking when I was 20 and doing drugs when I was 20. It's like night and day. And it was a process for me, too. Um, so I decided you know, I would quit drinking and doing drugs because it was killing me. And, but, you know, by God's grace, I'm still alive and I don't know how, but he must, he must have more for me than an early death. Um, and uh, I, had a, I had a mentor at that time, and he was a Christian, and I was so broken. I mean, God had broken me to the point of reasonableness, where I would listen to anybody that had something for me. And I, was, I had a friend at the time, who was kind of a mentor, he was a Christian, he would tell me all the things that Jesus did, all the miracles he did, all the spiritual principles, you know, love your enemies, and uh, just things like that. And he had my attention because, uh, you know, at that time, God was starting to become real to me. And that's when I started to figure, I wanted to figure out for myself. So I started reading the Bible. And I soaked it up like a sponge because Jesus, his words and his deeds and his actions and the promises later that I came to hold truth. Um, you know, I, I used to, when I was 19, 20, I was in college, still living at home with my parents. And I used to read the Bible under my covers at night so my dad wouldn't find me reading the Bible. And, um, you know, I, I mean... Compared to a lot of other Muslims, 
you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have any abuse or any, I haven't been thrown out of the family yet or anything like that. So, um, and you know, reading and reading the Bible, like I said, I soaked it up like a sponge. It was like nothing else I had ever read. And you know, there's, there's just some verses here that stood out to me, and and one of the biggest ones, kind of early on, that that just stood out to me. Matthew 5, 6. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father will... And your Father who sees you will reward you. Well, that means that I could pray to God alone by myself. And not everything was ritualized because God didn't care. Um, and I can tell you a story here. Um... The first time I prayed, I got on my knees, and this was so awkward because, you know, my pride was in full swing, but I said, okay, I'm going to try this, and I got on my knees, and I said, to whom may it concern, <laughs> help me, <laughs> and that started off my prayer life, and I'll tell you, it worked. He did help me, and... Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I had to unlearn, you know, um, you know, because the, they say the Bible is corrupted and that God had, um, you know, that Christians were pagans. And it's hard for me to figure out, you know, you know, trying to figure out the Trinity and stuff like that. And, and, and then the main thing about the Trinity is, is it kind of went off like another light bulb in my head. It said in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, not anything was made. So, that's the Word of God. That's, and the Word became flesh. That makes sense. So, he was in the beginning. He created heaven and earth, and everything that we see and we feel. I mean, he, he just created it with his word. He spoke it, and he became flesh. And, um, you know, so there's just... You know, I mean, today, I have a new relationship with God. You know, I, I learned slowly but surely about repentance, salvation, and that Jesus was coming back. And when he comes back, there'll be a new heaven, a new earth. Whatever your eschatology says, but, but that's straight from the Bible. Um, and it's all, you know, so, and I'm sure of this, he who began a good work in you will bring you to the completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And he has, and he has been faithful even as I'm not perfect. And um, I, I appreciate being able to come here and speak. You know, it's short, and um, it is a privilege, and I thank you very much. Good morning. So my name is Jesse. Um, there's some pamphlets laying around that kind of gives you a summary of my testimony. Um, I'm here today to give God glory. Um, you know, he came to set the captives free. And, you know, before Jesus comes into our life, we are a captive. We are a slave to sin. Um, he brought me out of Egypt. Um, I've been walking with him now for eight years. But prior to that, in 2014, he delivered me from the sex industry. So I began, began my journey um, at 19 years old as an escort, which is just a fancy word for prostitution. 
Um, at this point, I had twin daughters, um, newborns. My senior year, I gave birth to them. Um, I was actually in the hospital as my class was walking. Um, but prior to that, I came from a broken home. Um, my father was murdered when my mother was pregnant with me. So at a young age, I was looking for validation and love in all the wrong places. And unfortunately, my mother couldn't give me what she didn't have. She didn't have Jesus. So until you have God, you don't know what love is. What world says what love is, that's not love, okay? And until you know God, you really don't know love. So she didn't have love, so she couldn't give that to me. So um, that started my journey um, being promiscuous at the age of 12. Looking back, to me, that's a baby. You know, it's like, what does a 12-year-old know about sex? Um, so I just was looking for love in all, all the wrong places. And, you know, to get attention, I used my body, my looks, or whatever it really took. So I was just so confused growing up. Um, I didn't have a relationship with my mom. Um, I really, there was no communication in the household. So, you know, like a lot of people, I sought to fit in with, you know, with crowds that I shouldn't be running with. So throughout junior high and high school, um, obviously, like I said, I was having sex. I started getting into trouble. I was just very rebellious. Um, and then I had my twins my senior year of high school. And... When their dad left me, um, obviously I was heartbroken. I wasn't making much money at the time and he was dating an escort. So I was still kind of green at this point in my life. I never even heard of an escort. So I started to inquire about it and I was like, well, you know, if it's money is involved, right? Okay, I'll give it a shot. Well, that was a nine year, devastating journey and I say that because our actions affect our children okay so I have two twin daughters now that are going off to college in August and I look back and I see how my choices directly impacted them um, but thank God it's not too late you know um, he's working on our relationship and things like that and um, you know, I'm able to be a better example for them today. So, like I said, at age 19, I started off prostituting. I started going to jail. I started doing drugs just to cope with it. You know, you think sin is all fun and games when it starts off, right? But it's kind of just like um, you're on a slope, like an avalanche. It just, it's a snowball effect. So you start off, and before you know it, you're in bondage to this sin. And really, you don't, you, there's no way out. Jesus is the only way out. You know, I lost my kids um, right before their second birthday, I lost them. And it was a good thing that I did because they could have been exposed to more things. But I lost my kids. I started going to jail. So now I have this criminal history. I have a little bit of an education, a barely a high school diploma. So it's like, what do I do with my life at this point? So, um, I, you know, money uh, kept me in the business, and then obviously it takes a blow to your self-esteem. Um, I didn't have any social skills, um, anything like that, so I did feel stuck. Um, I ended up getting married, went through a divorce, um, and, you know, God really started working on me in 2012, 2013. Um, God was sending people in my path to plant seeds. So I'm reminded that some plant, some water, but he gives the increase. So I had no idea, amen, I had no idea what was going on, um, but God started working on me, and I got back custody of my twins um, in 2013, but I was still living in darkness. Um, I got pregnant with little Emmanuel at this point, and I was going to church. My mom kind of pleaded with me to go to church, and I was just scared. I was tired. There was no amount of money that could keep me in the business. I was just miserable at this point. Um, I had death threats. Obviously, like I said, I was going to jail, and I was just, I was done. And so I think that's where God has to get us to a place in our life 
that we are just tired, we're done. And there's probably some of you guys sitting in here today that you're going through things because we know the trials never stop. But, you know, I thank God for his grace and his mercy, because if you're still here, you still have a purpose. God is not done with you, okay? And I'm reminded in Genesis 50, 20, you know, what the devil, well, Joseph was talking to his brothers, but we know people do evil things because the devil is behind it. But you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done to the saving of many lives. So, you know, God is so good. Um, he is worthy of all of our praise, all of our honor. I think we take him for granted. I think we take his miracles. He is still the same God from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He says, I change not. He's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. You know, it's all about our faith. You know, he says, if we have the faith, the size of a mustard seed that we can, we can say, you know, cast that mountain into the sea. So what is that mountain that you guys are facing today? Okay. So, okay. Holy Spirit speaking. So I'm just going to let him speak because I wasn't even going to say that. So I got back custody of my daughters in 2013, which was a victory. It was just the Lord that got me my kids back. He knew that it was time for them to come home. So I surrendered my life to him a year later. Um, I was going to church and, you know, I was tired of escorting and I asked a family member, hey, you know, they were selling drugs and I said, hey, can you put me on, which means, you know, can you help me get some so I can start selling drugs because I thought that would be easier. But, you know, isn't that the way it is when you're living in sin? You'll get rid of one sin, but all of a sudden you pick up another one. Now, don't get me wrong. We sin every day, and, but there's a difference between, you know, premeditated, what I call it, sin, which is living in sin, right? So now we're not living in sin anymore. God has brought us out of that. But at this point, I was still living in sin, so I put the escorting to the side. I started selling cocaine. And God was doing that heart transformation on me that he talks about in Ezekiel. So here I was selling drugs to these people. They had kids, you know, out in the yard playing. And I was just so convicted by the Holy Spirit that here I was selling drugs to these people, taking money ultimately from their kids, right? So God started working on me like that. So I got pregnant with Emmanuel, like I said. I put the drugs down, um, and I went into a church service one night, and I was still living a double life. I was going to church, but I was coming out, and I was still in the world. And that's one of the scriptures the Lord's been bringing to me, and I'm going to share that with you. It's James 4.4. 4. He says, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is I can't say that. Basically, enemy with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So that's the challenges that we're facing today. The world wants us to be their friend. And we must remember when Jesus sat with sinners, he did sit with sinners to minister to them, not to sin with them. And so we have to be careful because sin is crouching at our doors, guys. It's knocking, it's waiting. You know, um, he's seeking to devour us. John 10, 10, that's what the enemy's trying to do to us today. He's seeking to still kill and destroy all that he may, and he knows that his time is short, so he's trying, if he can't take you out, he's trying to wear you out. Amen? So, um, so yeah, so I was living a double life. I was going to church, but I was coming out. I was selling drugs. I was still in fornication with my boyfriend, and I went into church for the second service that night, and it was honestly the Holy Spirit that kept me there because I was going to leave church, get dressed and clock in doing my, cause I was still escorting sometimes too. And you know, when, when she got on the pulpit and she preached that night, I knew the Lord was speaking to me because the first thing that this woman said was Jesus is coming back soon. And that's what he had been ministering to my spirit as he was working on me these months and years. He started me in the book of Revelation, and I knew she was speaking to me. And, well, he was speaking to me, and she paraphrased 
phrase, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexual immoral, nor the idolaters, adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. Well, I was still idolizing myself. I still had my will, and I was still sexually immoral. So at that point, a healthy fear of God came into my heart, and I knew that it was time because I had already, what do you want to call it? I cheated death, you know, numerous times. God spared my soul, and I was not going to play Russian roulette with him anymore because at the end of the day, he is gracious and loving. And I thank God for that because I need that every day, but he is a just God. Okay. And he, he's not playing around. He's coming back. He's coming back for a spotless bride. So, you know, we must be ready for that. Um, so once I surrendered my life to God, I didn't have a backup plan. Here I was pregnant with Emmanuel. I had my two twins at home and um, obviously I still had car payments, you know, rent, all of that. But I walked out of that service that night not knowing what I was going to do. And that was, well, it's been, that was in 2014. And these last eight years, he's just been opening doors. Um, I had to lose everything in order to gain everything. Um, you know, you think you're really, amen, you think you're really living life when you're living in sin, not knowing that you're a slave to it. But Luke 17, says, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. So when I walked out that night, I didn't know what I was going to do about this car payment. I didn't know what I was going to do about rent. And you know what? God had to humble me. Um, that first year, I was cleaning houses. I had Emmanuel. Um, God just, he just worked wonders. Um, I started off as a server um, at Waffle House. You guys don't have any Waffle Houses down here. Um, but I had a criminal history still at this point. It had not been expunged. And so what was I going to tell an employer that I did for the last, you know, nine years? What was I going to do about this criminal history? So my granny, she works at Waffle House, and she was like, come work for me. And I was like, okay. So got a job there, and it was very, very humbling. Um, but, you know, I seen God work wonders while I was there, too. He's just such a way maker. Amen. Um, so I was there for a year and I was like, my body's hurting. Like, you know, I'm like, I don't know. Cause we didn't get breaks or anything. And I was like, God, I'm not trying to, you know, but my back and legs are hurting. Like, and so I said, I'm going to give them a year. I'm going to work here a year and then I'm going to start looking for something else. So I applied for some jobs and things and the doors were getting closed and I was like, okay, whatever. And so um, right at my year mark, I had some people walk up to me, my upline, my bosses, and they was like, hey, are you interested in HR? And I was like, yeah, I didn't even think about it. I should have prayed about it probably, but I was just like, yeah, I'm interested. So anyways, that's been my journey. Um, I'm, um, I oversee 26 restaurants right now. Um, my job is a ministry though, I'll say that. Um, Wherever you are, God has you there for a reason. Your job, your neighborhood, your neighbors. I know you guys have heard this before, but there's no coincidences with God. Um, you know, and it's for his glory. You know, um, he's been bringing me to the book of Esther. You guys have been called for such a time as this. That's not gender specific. Um, you know, we are uh, commissioned to go out and tell the world about Jesus and to tell the world that he is coming back. So my job is, um, it is a ministry as well. And um, so I get to minister to people, even my bosses at times and things like that. But God has, you know, it hasn't been easy. I'm still a work in progress. Um, but, you know, being a Christian is one of the hardest things, but it's the best thing. It's rewarding, you know, but I'm here to give you guys hope. He came to set the captives free. 
you know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And that is the word of God. God, um, the, the devil is a liar. I don't care where you've been or what you're even facing today. You know, it's a sanctification process when we're walking with Christ. When I came to the Lord, I thought we were just supposed to have it all together. And every time I sinned, I thought I lost my salvation. But you know, um, God is so good. He does not want to see you in bondage. And if you're in sin, it is bondage. Um, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So that's um, what I want to encourage you on today is to be free. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to step out and tell people that I was in prostitution and things like that. I carried shame for a lot of years and things. Um, couldn't even really give people eye contact. Um, I would hold my head down. But you know what? I am a new creation. If you guys are born again, you are a new creation. Um, you know, and that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to discourage us. He wants us to walk around. And, you know, you're going to fall down. But the thing about it is just get back up. Get back up because we all still fall. Um, so I want to leave you with this. Uh, Romans 10, 13, he says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, um, if you have not been born again, maybe you have, maybe you have a family member, I want to encourage you to continue to pray for that person. Never say that person will never change because, you know, God takes the foolish things of this world to shame the wise, and that's what he's doing in this hour. He wants people who sold out to him. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be on a pulpit to spread the gospel. God will use you and meet you right where you're at. Maybe you're back in. You know, uh, the Lord has given me a word for the year 2022 that we will see many of the prodigals come home. So if you are a prodigal or if you know a prodigal, keep praying for that person. Don't give up hope. Amen. So that's why I wanted to leave you guys with um, just know that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And that can be your portion on today. Thank you. Amen. Hey, would you? Oh, can we say hallelujah to that? Hallelujah. Oh, praise his name. Let's look, read this together with me. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the truth. We thank you, God, for freedom. We thank you, O oh God, for victory. So, Lord, I pray that you will keep our hearts and our minds open to what you're saying to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the reminders today that you, God, are still in the saving business. You're still in the victorious business. You're still in the conquering business. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And it's in your precious name we pray. And everyone say amen. 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 You may be seated there. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what, if that doesn't stir your heart, oh, God, help you. Some, something needs to really break through because that's the answer. That's why we're here. That's why God has placed us here. That's why our Heavenly Father sent His Son is to save people from sin. Amen? And um, I tell you what, it, oh, I don't know how, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're a Christian and if that doesn't make, make you so excited, something, something needs to happen to you today to stir you up again, to get you excited about what Jesus did for you one day. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you why. <laughs> it should just shake you right down to the soles of your feet that God is still doing that. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. What's it mean for us when it comes to hearing the victorious word of God and understanding it that God's word is what will bring us the victory? And again, God's word the Word, the Word was made flesh. That's, uh, Janaid said that. that is, that's a reminder that the Word of God came to life and it was given a name named Jesus. That's what gives us victory. 
So what does it mean for us when we refer to this scripture in 1 Samuel? What does it mean for us to understand a person who has given their life over to the Word of God, the Word of God being victorious in their life, bringing victory into their life? What does it mean for a person to have a heart after God? It's one thing to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It's one thing for us to believe that His Word will set us free. But it is quite another for us to believe fully that that we can have a heart after God. This is exactly what we're looking at in this portion of Scripture. Several chapters here in 1 Samuel, this whole story about, about God calling out David to become the new king of Israel, to be, for David being an example of one that loves him with every fiber of his being. I hope that that begins to sink into us. And not just for this morning. We, we've got to be a people that we love God with every fiber of our being. That we want Him to be honored with our lives as we live for Him. That it's not something that we should ever approach casually. Uh, I've, I've heard it several times over the past, past week or so where people have just said, you know, I've just got, kind of gotten lazy with God. Don't let yourself get lazy with God. He's never lazy with you. Don't let yourself get so so caught up in the world and doing things that appease yourself or your family or or maybe maybe I know I know this happens maybe some family members are saying I wish you weren't so churchy I wish you weren't so churchy these days we could have so much more fun if you weren't so churchy if you could just dial it back on this Jesus thing just a little bit would you don't do it. Don't do it. God called out Samuel, his prophet. I need you to go and anoint someone to be a new king. Saul has not kept his focus on me. Saul is not seeking me with his whole heart. So I need you to go. I need you to anoint the one that I show you to anoint as the new king. God leads Samuel to Jesse's house, and Jesse thinks for sure that when he comes to anoint the new king, it's going to be his oldest son, who is the big strapping old alpha male of the son line. And now every, every son that, that, that Jesse brings before Samuel, it's a, no, it's a no-go. It's a no-go. It's a no-go. It's a no-go. And Samuel says, you got anybody else? You got any more? Well, I've got the youngest one. He's out in the field taking care of sheep and goats. Well, bring him here. Just as soon as Samuel sees David, he knows, he knows, and God says, that's the one. This ruddy-faced young boy, that's the one. And that's where it really starts. God sees you. And he sees me as a ruddy-faced people. That if we will seek him with all of our heart, he will use us for the greatness of his glory. He saw these two. His son and his daughter. He saw them in their ruddy-facedness. In all of their wanderings, their upbringings the decisions that they made. And he sees them and he says, I love you. And he continues as they share, continue to, to, to share things with them, put people in their path to draw them to his love. And it's oh so obvious that they are not who they used to be. They aren't yet everything fully what God wants them to be. And that's just like you and me. We are works in progress. Praise God. He's still working on you and me. But here's the beauty of it. You and I can make a choice to let God keep working on us. Can I just tell you, can I just say this as as a blanket, as an umbrella statement? There's some of you that need to begin allowing God to work on you again. 
Woo! Preachers can say that. It's time to let God do something fresh in your life, renewing in your life. It, it's time for some of you to say, God, would you please revive me again? Would you restore me again? Would you help me to be excited about Jesus again? That, that I don't get so cold in my, in my spiritual existence. I want to know victory in my heart every day. I want to have a heart that's after you, God. Can I just tell you, just, just because you have a certain age does not limit God. I believe God. <laughs> when, you, when, when you first found God and God first found you, He wants to make that just so fresh to you today. If you'll just let Him. If you'll just let Him. David's heart after God got God's attention. You know, if you will make a choice, if I will make a choice to, to, to desire God with everything I've got, it will get his attention. Now, understand this. God loves you and me so much that however we live, he does have, have us in, in view. He's watching us. He sees us where we are. You and I can't hide from him. No matter what we choose to do, it's not out from his, his eyesight. He sees us where we are. He knows what we have done and he knows what we're doing. So the beauty of us saying, I want a heart after God. I, I want to be like, like David. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's a man. There. What matters is, is what he chose to do with his life. I want a heart after God. I'm not going to put up any boundaries for, for myself. I want God to have his way in my life. That's the choice. That's the choice. And when, when Samuel anointed David as the new king, his, his, his ruling didn't take place at that moment. But when he was anointed king, boom, the holy presence of God just saturated David. God wants to saturate you with himself. Maybe that's, maybe that's an odd thing to, to hear. Maybe that's an odd thing to try to understand. But God wants you to be saturated with him. He doesn't want you to be a divided person, to be divided in your heart. You cannot have a heart fully after God if you are trying to still fulfill the flesh. You can't still go your own way and then be completely God's way. It just can't happen. And don't, don't pop off with that thing. But God knows me. He knows how, how I am. Yes, God knows exactly how, how you are, how I am. And he still loves us. Praise God. But he does not want, let me just say it this way. God is a jealous God. He is. He wants all of you and he wants all of me. David's heart after God got God's attention. It also, it also gave him confidence in God. When David was sent by his daddy out to what was going on in the battlefield, the Philistines were coming against the Israelites, and Israelites wanted to do, wanted to conquer the Philistines, but it wasn't going very well because they had that one guy, that one guy that made them run scared. One guy. I know he was nine feet tall. I know he was big and bad and loud. But this one guy was making them make the decision to tuck tail and run in fear. Well, David didn't know about this. He was sent by his dad to take some food and some other things to these brothers that were out on the battlefield, as well as giving some things to, to those who were the leaders. When David shows up, provides those things, 
talking to some folks, and all of a sudden he hears this loud, obnoxious, booming voice not saying any kind of thing nice about the Israelites or their God. He was cursing their God. Cursing their God with the names of his God. Actually, gods, it says. And David, a man after the heart of God, gets welled up inside of his heart and says, What's this? Who is this? What's going on here? Who is this? Who is this that is defying our God, the God of Israel, the God of all gods? Who's doing this? Well, that's Goliath. He's their big bad guy. It's like a big bad wolf. Why isn't anybody doing anything about this? His big brother got mad and said, why are you here? And you're just here to see the show, yada, yada, yada. You know, when people are not doing what they should be doing and someone begins to call them out for not doing what they should be doing, they don't like that. Are you with me? If someone comes up to you full of the Holy Spirit and says, hey, I love you, but I know you're making some choices in your life. I know you're making some life decisions. I know you're doing things. I know you're going places, and you shouldn't be. I, it doesn't matter what you think or what you think you deserve or what you're entitled to. That's not what people of God do. Most of the time, people don't like that. What are you going to do? Who's going to take care of this guy? You know how the story goes, David and Goliath. You know it. You could get up here and tell the story, couldn't you? David goes before Saul because Saul hears that, that this young guy is asking questions. Saul thinks that this little guy can't do a thing. David knows that he can because it's not in him that, that he has strength. It's in God. God will see that there's victory. Saul doesn't believe it. David believes it. You see, there's, there's a difference between being in the leadership of people than, and, and also having a heart after God. The story goes, Saul just says, okay, go get him. Go, go do it. Even let him have his, his uh, armor. David said, I can't handle that. He's got a sling, grabs five smooth stones out of the string. Watch this. David's heart, after God empowered and guided him to take a stand for God. If you haven't heard a thing, hear this. After, after Goliath announced his nastiness toward God and the things of God, God himself, David says this. What we read together. You come to me with sword, spear, javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies of Israel, whom you have defied today. The Lord will conquer you. Today, the Lord will conquer you. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing of any kind of a coincidence. Jesse made mention of that. With God, there are no coincidences. He's orchestrating everything. So, so when it comes to these, these individuals here, this brother and this sister who faced giants in their life and God through his power brought victory into their life, conquered the giants in their life, he wants to do the same for you and me. And here's the beauty of it. God really doesn't need a thing, but in this case, all he needed was one of these. All he needed was, was a small stone 
to bring down a great giant. I don't know what you're up against. And here, here's something too that, that really has been speaking at me. I don't think there, there's an acknowledgement by many, many people these days that they really are facing a giant. They just have accepted that's a part of their life or that's, that's a part of life that they have chosen to be a part of them. All it takes is the power of God behind a little rock to bring down the giant. But we have to realize that we can't be in bed with a giant anymore. We can't coddle the giant anymore. We can't continue to live life tolerating the giant because I'm telling you what anybody that says I got this taken care of hasn't got it taken care of it's taking care of you not in a good way it's handling you it's chained you up I'm sure there was many instances that you thought I got, I got this I got this whooped I'm, I, I got this cared for I got it I'm strong brings you down again so stop 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 telling yourself the lie that the enemy has been been telling you for so long that you got this handle let God and the power of God get behind a small stone and bring down the giant or giants in your life so that there can be victory that you know personally don't miss out on your victory any longer. Amen? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I got a, a flash memory here of, of, of the, the story that, uh, that people who are in Indiana are really proud of. It comes to the, the story of made into a movie of the Hoosiers. The last game, the coach wanted to run a certain play. Remember this? Wanted someone to take a shot, but the guy that was always, always faithful to make a shot stepped in, didn't he? It's like, it's like Saul and David. Coach, I'll make it. The coach had to believe beyond him, beyond his own thoughts that it would be done it would be done one small stone will bring down the giant will bring victory I believe this God is not looking for a bunch of perfect people because if he was he would have to skip over all of us. Are you with me? Every one of us, he would have to skip over. Praise God. He's looking for people who just want to have a heart after his heart. He just is wanting you and me to want him more than anything. More than anything, more, more than popularity, more than success, more, more, than, more than thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions in, in, in the bank. He, he wants us to want him more than what we want ourselves. He wants us to want him more than the next breath that might be coming our way. He wants you. He wants me to have a heart after his heart and in that is the power the power for victory amen stand with me please and let's bow our heads together praise team come on precious Lord we praise you but really how could we praise you enough for for the 
the reminders today that you have given, the, the revelation that you have provided today. Lord, we are here, right here, right now in this place on purpose. Lord, you have, you have spoken your truth through song, through prayer, through, through your vessels of clay to help us to awaken us to help us if, if we're living in shame that we don't have to live in shame any longer we can be free we can be whole we can be new we can have victory if we're finding ourselves li living with hopelessness we don't have to live in hopelessness any longer we can live with the hope of God if we're struggling with pride and sometimes the, the worst of pride can be spiritual pride that we think that what we know or what we have known or what we experience or what we have experienced all of those things make us spiritually superior oh god help us to humble ourselves before you so that you will lift us up giving us strength lord to move for forward in faith oh father praying this today with my heart for my own heart and for this people, this, this family here, whether they're here together in this place or, or they're gathering online, Lord, we need to be a people that have a heart after your heart more than anything. God, if there are things that we're allowing ourselves to choose to hold on to. God, help us today to realize we're not holding on to anything. Those things are holding on to us. We've got to believe in your power to bring those giants down, to break us free. If it's any kind of addiction, Lord, substance, drink, things that we look at, things that we think about, places that we go, people that we hang with. God, help us to want you more than anything. Help us to want you more than anything. And we're praying all of this in your name, Lord Jesus. Would you just keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed right now? if you would be so honest with yourself before the Lord and need I remind you that God already knows everything about you and he still loves you he still loves you if you know there is need of victory in your life you know that there is need of, of a giant or giants to be conquered in your life. If you know that there is something that seems to be in the way and you can't do anything about it, but this morning you've realized because of God's love and faithfulness and grace and mercy that he can do something with whatever it is in your life that you can't. And you want him to. Would you just raise a hand? Again, there's nobody looking around. It's just it's between you and the Lord. I need victory over that. I need to be free from that. I, I need to be free from myself. I, I, I continue to choose what I think I need or what I want, what my flesh desires. I want to be free from that. I want to have a heart that's after God above everything else. Because that's where victory is found. That's where the blessings will flow when I put my whole life into God's care. Into God's care. Lord, we're trusting you to have your way. 
We need you, Lord, to have your way. We, Lord, want the will of God to be done on earth as it is in heaven right now today. There is nothing more important than that. Because when we want that the most, our heart becomes transformed into a heart like yours, Lord. Lord, would you receive right now everything that your, your sons and your daughters are placing before you? Every addiction, every sin, every struggle, every trial, every past issue or experience, every thought of shame, every bit of pride, that we, you receive it, Lord. And that, God, I would pray that you would help each one of your sons and daughters to have a heart that is wide open for you, God, to do what you are so able to do, to transform our hearts into hearts after you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for what you are able to do, what you are doing right now. We believe you for it, God. We believe you for it, for life transformation, for people that are strong and courageous and victorious because our hearts are in tune with your heart, Father. We bless your mighty name, we do. We bless your mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Janae and Jesse, would you come this way? Pastor Tony, would you come up this way too? Would you kneel down right here? Would you do that? Church family to come. Let's kneel all around. Come. got to encourage So let's pray together. Let's believe together that God will continue to use this brother and this sister and that, that God, has, God has used them as instruments today to share with us and remind us that God is still in the business of transforming people's lives. He is still saving people from the darkness, setting captives free, that we will continue to pray and believe and trust in him to continue to set more people free. Lead us in prayer, brother. Precious Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. That's right. Praise God. Lord Jesus, you have prayed for them so much. They can they need to speak of what they have seen and heard from your Holy Spirit, renewing them and saving them. Lord, their testimonies are powerful today. I pray that you continue to use them. I pray they continue to yield their life to you. Lord, you have a purpose and a plan for each one of them. And we are ministers of the gospel anywhere we go. As Christians, we are called to protect and to spread the gospel anywhere that we go. 
So, Lord, protect their minds. I pray the full armor of God over Jesse and Janae and their families. And, Lord, as they continue to spread the message of Jesus Christ, give them the gospel of peace. Protect their feet as they walk in peace. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for other Christians who encourage us in the faith. And it, it was by no accident that we had the scripture today, Ephesians 1.17, where the Apostle Paul kept praying for the Ephesians that God would reveal, give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know them better. Lord, your, your will is for us to know you better. And we do that namely through the community of God. So we thank you so much for the community of God. Though they are not part of our local church, they are part of the family of God. And Lord, as they encourage us, as we encourage one another, may we look forward eagerly to the return of Jesus Christ with, with eager expectation. This isn't all there is. This is just the beginning. This is just a foretaste of heaven. So Lord, help us to press on. Help us to not grow weary in what doing. You are our reward. And Lord, you came for each one of us. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Lord Jesus, help us as we leave here, as we go into the mission field. May we proclaim the good news of the gospel, Lord. It is good news indeed. May the good news never become old news or yesterday's news. It is still good news today. So Lord, bless them. Bless your people as we leave here. May, we, may each one of us say we have met with the Lord Jesus Christ today. To you be the glory and honor both now and forever. Amen. Give God praise today. Uh, he's worthy of it. He is worthy of it. Also, if you would like to give to Jesse or Janae, you can write a check to THFN, and uh, we'll make sure they, they get some money. The donation plate's in the back there. Amen, sir. To the Lord with celebration in our hearts. Souls 